perhaps Dugan's most famous um, formulation of Zazen uh, was that it's the continuous uh, dropping off of body and mind. So it seems to be an expression unique um, to Dogen, although um, he claims that it is derived from uh, his teacher, uh, Nyojo. So two parts to it, uh, dropping off body and mind, um, dropping off mind, um, I think is reasonably easy for us to understand. But the, the, the part which is unique to Dogen is dropping off body. There's much less attention paid to that. Um, what does that mean? Well, I think that one of the things which um, it means is dropping off a habitual um, splitness um, that we um, experience with our body. Um, that is a persistent um, visualization as it were, a continual picturing um, from a, a vaguely um, external perspective um, of our body, um, which is often a, a dominant sense over what we're somatically um, feeling and experiencing. So the dropping off, um, I, I would say, is in, in, in one sense, the dropping off of this um, visualization um, of the body. And also, also um, when we do that, the sense of the body as, a, as an object, uh, amongst other objects, and hence of the, um, the, the body separation, uh, also drops off. And because um, dropping off body has been given an adequate um, attention, um, then often the instructions that were given um, about our body and Sazen uh, are likewise uh, deficient and brief. So I would like to make um, some um, proposals um, about how you might be able to practice. Um, so firstly, when we say body, um, if you ask someone to point to their body, they will generally do something like uh, pointing to their torso. They won't point to their head. Um, but um, if we think about it for a moment, um, it's obvious that our body is all of us, but it's equally obvious that there's an unconscious um, split um, that's going on whereby our head is identified with our self, our mind, and so on, um, and our body is, um, is the um, subservient um, entity. That's kind of an implicit in our language. So um, if I asked you to paint me a self-portrait, um, I might be rather surprised if you painted my torso or you painted my foot. You know, I'd expect you to um, paint my head. So um, when we um, we're asked to give attention to our body, then what we will often do is to um, maybe try and focus on our uh, the breath in our um, uh, lower belly, our chest, something like that. And what we ignore is what is very 
easy for us to do, um, which is um, to bring our attention to the various aspects um, of our head, so the slight tension in our forehead and eyes perhaps, um, the uh, maybe tightness in our jaw, the sensation of air coming in the nostrils, the sensation of the, the tongue in the mouth, the lips and so on. All of that is very accessible to us, much more accessible I would say than um, feeling in, in other parts of our body. Um, so, um, paying attention to that is helpful in, in a number of respects. Um, so, apart from um, it being more accessible, it also uh, breaks the identification which we make unconsciously between our, our head and our mind. That's one thing. Um, but also, as it were, um, again, in a slightly different way because of that unconscious identification, it embodies the, the mind. Um, and once, the, once um, the mind is embodied in that way, um, then as it were, that embodiment can, can flow down from the head to the rest of the body. Um, so uh, that's one suggestion. Uh, another suggestion for um, enlivening the body is that um, we uh, we pay attention um, to um, a sensation in our body which is neutral. Um, so very often how people practice is that they're very aware, too aware of um, the pattern of uh, thoughts and emotions and they only become aware of their body when they experience pain or discomfort. When they experience pain or discomfort, there's a kind of anxious contraction of awareness around that pain or discomfort and a kind of cascade of um, thoughts which kind of reinforce that uh, pain or discomfort. So it's a very good idea um, to just be aware of um, neutral um, sensations in the body and, and develop um, a, a, um, a, a, a kind of muscle uh, of awareness um, of being able to, to hold within awareness um, a, a particular body sensation um, but hold it within a, a wider um, awareness of the rest of the body and the rest of um, your environment and if you can develop that habit then you can experience uh, um, body sensation uh, not as being something um, physical and specifically located um, but energetic, uh, changeable and uh, connected to um, to to everything else um, and uh, and uh, changeable um, uh, my third suggestion is uh, that um, you make a distinction um, between your postural muscles and your voluntary muscles so Postural muscle, muscles are what basically hold you up. Um, your voluntary muscles are those uh, muscles which enable you to do things. So you're reaching for a cup, um, for instance. Um, if your posture is right, um, then you won't, you won't be using your voluntary muscles when you're sitting, you'll simply be using your postural muscles. If your posture isn't right, then you're going to be using your um, voluntary muscles. So if, um, for instance, your pelvis isn't in the right position, your head's probably going to be in the wrong position and you're going to keep voluntarily moving um, your head or, your, or your, your torso using your voluntary muscles. 
The reason why that's important, or one of the reasons, is that um, I think maybe in, because of the way the proprioceptive system works, that when you use your voluntary muscles, it often comes with um, a kind of uh, visual sense of what it looks like, I guess, so your mind then um, has a picture of what your body is doing. The postural muscles, um, in, in my experience, don't come with that uh, visual uh, connotation. And so relying on the postural muscles um, makes it much easier um, to drop off a body because they don't come um, uh, bringing with them this uh, visual picture.